Thank you. Good afternoon. Actually, I will uh, speak about uh, low-grade uh, gliomas, uh, uh, standards of care and in newly diagnosed and recurrent disease. Uh, as uh, you will see, uh, it is quite a uh, um, complex uh, topic with still uh, uh, several, several unanswered uh, questions. And I will uh, try to make it as clear as, uh, as possible. So uh, when we uh, know in... Uh, uh, 2021 speak about low-grade uh, gliomas. What are we uh, uh, speaking uh, about? Actually, uh, when uh, um, we uh, now uh, speak about uh, low-grade diffuse gliomas, what uh, we uh, speak about are uh, diffuse gliomas, which are IDH mutant and have either uh, one pin and Q codulation and correspond to low-grade oligodendrogliomas or IDH mutant diffuse gliomas without the one pin and Q correlation, which correspond to low-grade uh, astrocytomas. Um, and it is important to uh, differentiate this um, true uh, low-grade gliomas from uh, uh, gliomas, which can, uh, at the histological level, present as a uh, low-grade glioma, but which have uh, molecular alterations that in the uh, new classification of brain tumors make them classified either as uh, glioblastomas or as uh, which are uh, grade four even if for example if you have uh, low grade histology but if you have this alteration in the tumor then it will be classified as a grade four uh, molecular glioblastoma uh, another example are um, uh, midline diffuse gliomas with a low-grade histology, but with a histone mutation. Even if there is no histological evidence of aggressivity, the presence of this mutation uh, makes these uh, tumors classified as uh, grade 4. So this is very important uh, as a first uh, step to uh, be sure that uh, when the histology is suggestive of uh, low-grade diffuse glioma, that molecular analysis are uh, consistent with uh, the diagnosis. This is uh, here uh, examples of, of patients. You see uh, three different uh, patients um, at the histological level. Uh, the diagnosis is, the, is a diagnosis of low-grade astrocytoma, but to be sure that this is uh, really a low-grade uh, astrocytoma, it is important to look at the molecular analysis and to perform an integrated diagnosis. In the first case, you can see that there is an IDH mutation, no one pin and Q correlation, and that we, so we can conclude to uh, grade two uh, astrocytoma. But in the second case, in, the, in this midline uh, glioma, uh, there is no IDH mutation. There is a histone, uh, a particular histone mutation as found in, in very aggressive tumor. And now in the uh, classification of uh, brain tumors, uh, this, this tumor is uh, considered as, as a high-grade glioma, even though the uh, histological appearance is uh, reassuring. And the, and the last case, this is, uh, you see that more molecular analysis show uh, that there is no IDH mutation, that there is a third promoter mutation. Actually, this tumor has a molecular profile of glioblastoma and uh, will now be classified as glioblastoma in the uh, new uh, classification of, uh, of gliomas. So this is very important uh, to uh, do uh, um, uh, um, careful molecular analysis of the tumors that present as diffuse low-grade gliomas because, um, it, uh, as you can see, the prognosis will be clearly different. Oligodendrogliomas have a much better prognosis than astrocytomas, and um, uh, low-grade gliomas without IDH mutation have, uh, in general, a prognosis uh, very similar to that of uh, glioblastomas. So as uh, mentioned by the previous uh, 
presenter, Professor Imiatinov, um, IDH, the IDH mutation characterizes uh, lo, lo, through low-grade gliomas. Uh, IDH mutation results in the production of two hydroxyglutarate, which result in multiple uh, different uh, consequences, metabolic reprogramming, epigenetic reprogramming, and redox imbalance. And as uh, already um, explained by Professor Roth, the presence of this mutation is uh, makes make, make it a very attractive uh, target because um, this mutation, when present, is present in all tumor cells. We know this from a genomic analysis that uh, per performed in different parts of the tumor. And uh, this analysis showed that the IDH mutation is present in all tumor cells. It is thought that it is a very initial molecular alteration. And uh, very interestingly, when um, genomic analysis were performed in different re in recurrences in, uh, across time, uh, the IDH mutation in most cases is uh, found in the recurrence. So um, we will discuss it later, but you, uh, this uh, um, slide uh, makes you understand that the IDH mutation is a particularly attractive uh, target. So briefly, what is the clinical and radiological presentation of uh, low-grade gliomas? Uh, median age diagnosis is uh, uh, somehow younger in astrocytomas compared to oligodendrogliomas. In most cases, this present, uh, the, the, the patient presents seizures, which uh, reveal the, the disease. And seizures are more much frequent than technological deficit or intracranial hypertension. In most cases, uh, the radiological diagnosis corresponds to an intraaxial, non-enhancing um, tumor. And um, when there is um, a mismatch, a discordance uh, between the flare and the T2 sequence, when the lesion is homogeneous on T2 but heterogeneous on flare, like you can see on this uh, MRI, then this is called the T2 flare mismatch sign. Uh, and this sign has a strong um, positive predictive value for as the diagnosis of astrocytoma. It is not very sensitive. It is present only in 30 to 50% of astrocytomas. But when the, this sign is present, it is uh, very uh, specific. Uh, certain uh, teams uh, with uh, uh, very advanced uh, uh, MRI uh, uh, developments and uh, spectroscopy um, uh, software can detect in the tumor the 2 hydroxyglutarac uh, peak, which is the consequence of the IDH mutation. And uh, it is likely that in the future, uh, it will help to, uh, uh, to, to be sure that the tumor that looks like a low-grade glioma is a through IDH mutant glioma. And, and it could also help in the future to monitor the activity of the, the treatment. Uh, so what is briefly the natural history of low-grade glioma? Uh, these tumors, as you know, are characterized by a very, uh, sometimes a very slow growth. Uh, in uh, median, the mean diameter growth per year is 4 millimeter. And this is the reason why sometimes we can have the impression that the tumor is not grow growing, but actually all these tumors grow. Um, the, the speed of growth uh, is variable. When it is above 8 millimeter per year, it is uh, associated with a, a poor prognosis, but um, almost uh, all these tumors grow. And uh, after a variable period of time, um, which is actually very variable, these tumors will uh, develop, will become anaplastic tumors, uh, which is usually characterized on the MRI by the operation of a contrast uh, enhancement. So um, how to treat uh, these uh, tumors? Um, so the first question to ask when uh, a patient is uh, uh, suspected of a low-grade uh, glioma is whether surgical resection is uh, possible. Indeed, uh, even if there is no uh, prospective clinical trial demonstrating the benefit of surgery, there, are, there is a lot of retrospective studies which are concordant and show that the lower 
the post-operative volume than the better the prognosis. This is what is shown in this study, but there are, there are multiple studies showing quite similar results. It is better to have no post-operative uh, residue uh, com compared to only a small uh, or a larger uh, post-operative residue. And um, this um, uh, still needs to be confirmed in, uh, in further studies, but the, uh, of course surgical resection is important in all low-grade gliomas, but uh, it seems particularly important in uh, astrocytomas, as you can see here, where the differential impact of postoperative uh, volume is particularly evident in astrocytomas and uh, maybe a, uh, less Less, a bit less evident in oligodendrogliomas, possibly because these tumors are uh, more sensitive to uh, oncological treatment than astrocytomas. But again, this is retrospective data, and um, more data are needed to, 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 confirm, uh, to confirm this. But in the future, it could mean that maybe the, 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 the surgical strategy could vary according to the molecular subtypes, and maybe uh, surgeons uh, should be more uh, aggressive in astrocytomas than oligodendrogliomas. So once patient, uh, if, if surgery is possible, then patient should have a surgery. If surgery is not possible, then a biopsy is needed to have the diagnosis. And then there is the question of uh, the oncological treatment. And uh, regarding the oncological treatment, radiotherapy and chemotherapy, there are two distinct questions. The first question is when should uh, uh, treatment be given? And second question is which treatment should be given, how to treat uh, patients. Regarding the question of uh, when starting uh, the treatment, we have uh, one uh, uh, randomized trial that uh, helps us to uh, answer uh, this uh, question. This trial conducted in the 90s uh, compared uh, early radiotherapy to delayed radiotherapy in patients with low-grade glioma. And what this study showed is that early radiotherapy improves progression-free survival, but uh, is equivalent to delayed radiotherapy in terms of overall survival. And uh, based on this study, because uh, we've, as you know, uh, radiotherapy can be, have uh, some toxicity, uh, uh, can result in cognitive decline, and because uh, this study was not associated with um, quality of life analysis, uh, based on this study, uh, the standard after surgical resection is active uh, follow-up, active surveillance, and uh, uh, not to propose an early treatment to patients. However, uh, this study um, compared radiotherapy, early radiotherapy to delayed radiotherapy, uh, but we don't know if this, the results of this study would be uh, true for all molecular subgroups because at the time this study was conducted, uh, all molecular subgroups are currently identified were, were, not, uh, were not known. And we also don't know if the results would be similar for other treatments than oral therapy uh, alone. And as, you can, as I will explain you, uh, we know uh, know that adding chemotherapy to radiotherapy is very important for patients, and uh, whether early radiotherapy plus chemotherapy uh, would lead to similar results is an open question. And uh, actually, to, to ask this question, um, there is currently an ongoing clinical trial uh, performed by the URTC, um, which asks whether early radiotherapy plus adjuvant temozolomide chemotherapy uh, would be better uh, compared to active surveillance in uh, astrocytoma patients uh, who, uh, who uh, don't need um, uh, early treatment because of neurological deficit or, or um, incomplete resection or large tumor volume. This is, so this is a very important trial to, uh, containing a very important and still uh, open uh, question. So once uh, patients have had a, a surgery, there are, um, there are different options, either active uh, surveillance or uh, starting an oncological, an oncological treatment. Uh, but actually, uh, currently, there is no easy answer 
to say uh, to to say when a treatment uh, should be started. Um, characteristics that favor early treatment are uh, older age, the presence of a neurological deficit, the presence of a pharmacoresistant epilepsy, a large postoperative volume, uh, a rapid growth. But uh, this is still a matter of debate. This, this is uh, the reason why the, the, the clinical trial I, I previously mentioned is uh, important. Of course, patients who have undergone surgery uh, can uh, undergo resurgery, undergo resurgery uh, at, uh, if, if possible. Huh? But uh, at, some t as, at some time, an oncological treatment will have to be given, and then this is the how uh, how question uh, which uh, treatment should be given. To answer these uh, questions, uh, this question, there are two uh, clinical trials that uh, helped uh, us. The first trial conducted in the U.S. Uh, compared radiotherapy alone, which was considered at this time under standard, to radiotherapy uh, plus uh, adjuvant PCV chemotherapy. And this uh, trial demonstrated, as you can see on the curve, that adding PCV chemotherapy um, greatly improves progression-free survival in uh, these patients. And... Uh, this is true uh, in oligodendroglyomas, in astrocytomas, uh, but uh, no uh, in uh, IDH wild type low grade gliomas, but these are not the true uh, low grade gliomas as I previously mentioned. And very importantly, this study also demonstrated that in these populations, which was a population of uh, high risk patients because they were uh, either aged more than 40 or had only a partial resection, uh, adding PCV to real therapy also improved overall survival. And uh, this was true uh, again in um, oligonondroglyomas, astrocytomas, but not in the false uh, low grade gliomas. So this is the first study, a very important study, because this is the first study showing that adding chemotherapy improves survival in, in this patient. And the other study was a study uh, conducted in a quite similar population by the URTC, um, and that compared radiotherapy, again, the standard at this time, to uh, temozolomide chemotherapy without um, uh, radiotherapy. Uh, at the moment, we only have for this study the results regarding progression-free survival. We don't have the overall survival data, but what this study shows is that, uh, as you can see, um, both treatments are, are equivalent in the whole population uh, regarding progression-free survival. But when we look at the different molecular subgroups, we see that uh, the two strategies are equivalent in oligodendrogliomas, but in astrocytomas, so the tumor is characterized by only the IDH mutation without the 9P19 q codelation, where therapy um, is associated with a, a better progression free survival than temozolomide chemotherapy alone. So, of course, uh, we have to wait for the, the mature data regarding overall survival to draw a definitive conclusion regarding the study. But if we combine the results of uh, these two studies, we can uh, make the likely assumption that, that in oligodendrogliomas, RT plus PCV is superior to RT, which seems quite equivalent to temozolomide. And then in astrocytomas, RT plus PCV is superior to RT and superior to uh, temozolomide. But um, again, we have to wait for the mature results regarding overall survival uh, of the, uh, the, the, the this uh, URTC study. So based on this study, principi principally, uh, currently the, the standard of care for uh, uh, patients with low-grade gliomas needing another treatment and surgery and which are IDH mutant is RT plus uh, PCV regarding the, the treatment of low-grade gliomas without the IDH mutation. Uh, it is quite controversial, but this is a heterogeneous group uh, of, of, of tumors. And as previously said, these tumors don't correspond to the uh, usual classical low-grade gliomas. So what are currently the, the ongoing unanswered question regarding the first-line treatment of, of these tumors. One question is, can PCV chemotherapy uh, be replaced by temozolomide? Um, what we know, um, based on retrospective data in anaplastic gliomas, is that 
PCV chemotherapy seems uh, superior to temozolomide in oligodendrogliomas uh, when given alone as a first line treatment, but um, quite, it seems quite similar to temozolomide in uh, astrocytomas. Uh, again, this is retrospective data. I, I think that this question regarding PCV versus temozolomide will be answered in an ongoing trial, which is the CODEL trial, which is comparing RT plus PCV versus RT plus temozolomide in oligodendrogliomas. Um, regarding uh, astrocytomas, um, I think that a, a likely assumption, a likely hypothesis is that temozolomide is is quite similarly effective uh, as PCV. Um, and we also have uh, data in anaplastic astrocytomas uh, coming from the Catnon trial that showed that adding a driven PCV towards or the therapy in a jet mutant as anaplastic astrocytomas improves overall survival uh, compared to therapy without a driven um, temozolomide. But uh, a formal comparison between temozolomide and PCV is still lacking in this uh, population. Another question is, uh, is it possible to treat with chemotherapy uh, alone uh, oligodendrogliomas? Uh, you know that uh, oligodendrogliomas are the most chemosensitive diffuse gliomas um, in adults. And um, um, these patients have uh, classically, a uh, very prolonged survival, median survival of patients treated with RT plus PCV is above 10 to 15 years. And um, uh, this uh, raises the question of uh, the quality of survival because, and, and because of the risk of post radiotherapy cognitive dysfunction. Um, it has been clearly shown that in patients with low-grade glioma, which, uh, who are followed uh, after a sufficient period of time, patients who have had uh, radiotherapy uh, show tend to have cognitive decline, attention, difficulties in attention, uh, uh, like uh, and, and develop uh, executive syndrome in a higher grade oligodendrogliomas up to uh, one third of the patient uh, develop severe cognitive uh, dysfunction. So this is um, uh, an important concern. And we, um, this is the reason why um, we are uh, conducting, conducting a trial uh, to uh, determine in uh, low-grade oligodendrogliomas, IDH mutant, when pinentine Q codelated, if initial treatment with PCV chemotherapy alone um, could uh, improve uh, survival without cognitive deterioration. A similar uh, study is uh, being conducted in France by the, the, the French Neuro-Oncology Association in uh, anaplastic oligodendrogliomas, and we are now starting a similar study in uh, low-grade low -grade, uh, oligodendrogliomas. So this is an open question. Uh, there are several retrospective studies showing that chemotherapy alone, especially with PCV, is um, associated with uh, uh, prolonged survival but, uh, and seems quite a safe uh, option. But of course, this needs to be confirmed uh, and um, uh, assessed within a clinical trial to have a definitive uh, answer. So uh, uh, another uh, thing, uh, important uh, question is uh, the role of IDH inhibitors. As uh, Professor Roth uh, told you, IDH inhibitors have been um, tested in a recurrent IDH uh, mutant uh, gliomas, and in those uh, without contrast and enhancement, uh, these uh, inhibitors uh, have um, shown uh, responses, the, the type of responses as we are used to see with temozolomide or PCV. Here you have the, the, the example of three patients. You can see the, the low-grade glioma growing before treatment onset in all three examples, and then treatment is started, and then you have the, the response after 
a uh, few months of treatment. And here, here you have the corresponding uh, evolution of the, the tumor volume uh, growing before treatment onset. And then the treatment is started and the tumor starts to, um, to, 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 to decrease. And um, because the IDH mutation is a very uh, initial event, um, I think that there is a reason, reasonable hope that treating early this patient with inhibitors, uh, IDH inhibitors, could uh, enable to uh, uh, stabilize these tumors or to stop uh, the disease at a very early level. And this is currently being um, tested in a clinical trial, which is uh, testing the role of IDH inhibitors in uh, low-grade gliomas, uh, which have not received any chemotherapy and any radiotherapy, and uh, which are in patients who are at the beginning of uh, their uh, disease. This is the indigo, uh, the ongoing indigo trial. So. Um, Regarding treatment of uh, at recurrence, the, there is current, there is no standard. There is no standard. It uh, clearly depends of what was the previous uh, treatment. If patient had only a surgery, then there is a question of, of free surgery, and then uh, the, the treatment that can be uh, given uh, is uh, quite similar to uh, treatment at uh, at the initial stage. In patients which have received only uh, radiotherapy, um, this is the case for patients who were treated five or 10, ten years ago, then there is always a question of free surgery, and then these patients can be treated with stemozolomide or PCV. Um, um, and uh, if patients uh, have already received radiotherapy and PCV chemotherapy or both, then uh, the, 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 the situation becomes uh, more uh, complex because uh, at this time we uh, start lacking effective uh, treatments and uh, it is important to consider whether, whether clinical trials are available for these patients. Indeed, uh, on this, if you look uh, at this table, uh, this is a summary of studies in, in patients with recurrent low-grade gliomas, which were treated with borotherapy and chemotherapy. And if you look at the efficacy of the different uh, chemotherapy regimen in, uh, at this stage, you see that the response rate uh, varies between uh, uh, 0 to uh, 40 percent. But that, and you see that the, me the median progression-free survival and the median overall survival are not satisfying. And this is the reason why uh, for this patient at this situation of the disease, uh, we need uh, new treatment strategies. Uh, these treatment strategies have uh, already uh, been mentioned by uh, uh, the previous uh, presenters. The, the, they are uh, mostly based on what we know about uh, the consequences of the H, the H mutation in these tumors. Uh, we can use IDH inhibitors, but this uh, compounds look uh, specifically interesting in non-contrast enhanced tumors. In anap when the tumor becomes anaplastic, then uh, these compounds don't seem to be very effective anymore. Uh, ID anti ndh immunotherapy with the vaccine mentioned uh, by uh, Patrick Roth and developed by, uh, by Michael Platten uh, may, may be a very interesting strategy. Uh, and other strategies include uh, epigenetic inhibitors, DNA repair inhibitors, metabolic inhibitors. Um, so there are different uh, str promising strategies, um, but uh, uh, this, uh, all these strategies need to be, uh, to be tested in, uh, in clinical trials. So in conclusion, um, uh, in uh, these tumors, there is an important role of surgery but this is a very particular surgery. It's a surgery uh, most often uh, these patients need, um, uh, need a, uh, awake surgery. This is a very, sorry. Sorry, this is a very specialized surgery. 
the the the, treat, the, the question of when to start treatment is uh, still uh, an open question uh, regarding how to treat. I think we have some some uh, data which are uh, summarized here, and I personally believe that IDH inhibitors may be uh, the early use of this uh, this compound may be um, a very interesting option in the future, uh, but. Uh, as said, we uh, need uh, all new strategies for patients who progress after other therapy and chemotherapy. And uh, to conclude, um, my last uh, slide, um, this is to just give you an example that there are still many uh, unknowns. This is one of my patients uh, with uh, an oligodendroglioma who is uh, doing uh, uh, the best. Actually, this patient did a seizure, uh, had a seizure in 1994, and then uh, he had no MRI follow-up for uh, for 16 years. And uh, I met him uh, 10 years ago. At this time, we, he had a biopsy. The biopsy demonstrated an uh, anaplastic oligodendroglioma, IDH mutant, codilated. He had only 12 cycles of temozolomide, and uh, more than 10 years later, he's uh, completely fine. He's having a normal life. So I think that uh, this kind of uh, patients um, uh, highlight that we have uh, still a lot of uh, uh, um, things to, to understand in, in, uh, in these uh, uh, tumors, uh, probably because there are very indolent uh, tumors that maybe you can only uh, follow up, treat with uh, uh, non-toxic uh, uh, chemotherapy for a short period of time and who will have a very good out outcome. And I think that in the future, uh, advances in the understanding of the biology, uh, genomics, transcript Atomics and uh, methylation data regarding this tumor will help us to uh, identify and select patients who need uh, more or less intensive strategy. I thank you for, for your attention.